Welcome to sciencecover.com. In this session, we will look at nuclear fission. The aims of the session are to find out what a fission process is, how we can use nuclear fission, and what happened during the Chernobyl incident. Pause the video now and attempt the do no task. Check your answers to the do now task. Let's start by looking at what we mean by a nuclear fission process. Some atoms are unstable. We know these atoms as radioactive. We also know that they have the potential to break down into smaller elements at any given time. This is a random decay process. However, if we add a neutron to the unstable atom, then we increase its instability. And this can cause the atom to break up into smaller atoms immediately. Nuclear fission is the process of splitting a nucleus into smaller elements through absorbing a neutron. This results in the production of two or three neutrons, some extra elements, and releases energy. You can see in this diagram that a neutron is being added to uranium-235. This will create for a moment uranium-236. But uranium-236 is so unstable that it almost instantly breaks up into barium and krypton. Now this process releases neutrons from the nucleus. So we can see three neutrons being ejected by the barium and the krypton. And this process also then releases energy. This animation shows the process in action. We can see a neutron being added to the nucleus of uranium-235 to create uranium-236. But almost instantly, the nucleus breaks up into two smaller nuclei, krypton and barium. Three neutrons are released in the process. Now these three neutrons could go on to strike other uranium atoms. This process is called a chain reaction. When uncontrolled, the neutrons released in the nuclear fission process can be absorbed by neighbouring uranium nuclei. This causes them to undergo nuclear fission and releases neutrons. This is a very quick process and it releases a massive amount of energy in a short space of time. And this is the type of reaction, when left uncontrolled, is used in an atomic bomb. Pause the video now and complete task one. Let's check our answers. Complete the diagram to show what will be formed in a nuclear fission reaction of uranium. So first on the left hand side, we should show a neutron being absorbed by uranium-235. We could show uranium-236, however, it's so unstable, we may skip this and just show the barium and krypton that are left behind after it breaks up. This releases three neutrons, and then energy is released also. Complete the diagram to show how a chain reaction 
can be caused by a nuclear fusion reaction. So in this case, take the neutrons that are released from the nuclear fission and use them to incite nuclear fission in another uranium atom. If the nuclear fusion process is left uncontrolled, describe what will happen. So a chain reaction will occur, a large amount of energy will be released over a few seconds, and we will witness a nuclear explosion. Now let's look at the uses of nuclear fission. The first use of nuclear fission we've mentioned already. When a nuclear fission chain reaction is uncontrolled, we know that a massive amount of energy is released in only a few seconds. This is what we call a nuclear bomb. So in this case, a neutron is fired at uranium-235, making it unstable. The unstable atom breaks into smaller atoms, releasing neutrons. These neutrons then go on to start new fission in neighbouring uranium atoms, creating a chain reaction. Each reaction is going to release energy, and the process happens quickly and releases lots of energy in a short space of time. Now, if we control the chain reaction to slow it down, then it means we can release the heat at a slower rate. And this is what happens inside a power station. We can slowly release the heat and use the heat to heat water into steam. We can use the steam to spin turbines and the turbines will spin a generator producing electricity. So this diagram shows our nuclear power station. And we can see our generator, which will spin to produce electricity. And we can see the turbines that are being used to spin the generator. Now to spin the turbines, we need to heat water into steam. And this is where the nuclear fuels come in. So this section here contains two types of rods. We've got fuel rods and we've got control rods. And the fuel rods contain the uranium and the control rods are made out of boron, a substance that absorbs neutrons. How does a nuclear reactor produce heat? We know that we need uranium and this comes in the form of fuel rods. And this is surrounded by a moderator, which is usually water. And the moderator's job is to slow down neutrons. So at this point, we'd trigger our nuclear fission process in the uranium, and this is going to release neutrons. And the neutrons come out at high speed, but then they travel through the water moderator, which slows them down. And then when they hit a neighboring fuel cell, they'll hit uranium atoms, and this will cause a, another fission process and the release of more neutrons. So those neutrons will travel through the moderator, get slowed down and hit the uranium. Now, this process is how the nuclear reactor produces heat. But if left, then it will become an uncontrolled reaction and release huge amounts of heat in a short space of time. So we need to introduce something that allows us to control the reaction. Now this is our control rods. The control rods are made out of boron. and Boron absorbs neutrons. So we place these between the fuel rods and they can be raised to speed up the reaction by exposing more of the fuel rod or we can lower them in, which covers up the fuel rods and slows down the reaction. So this control rod, depending on how far we push it in or pull it out, helps us speed up and slow down the reaction. So if we bring back our original power station 
diagram, we can see on the left hand side, the control rods and the fuel rods, they are our nuclear reactor producing heat. And then we place water into the reactor, which will come back out as steam. We can use the steam to turn the turbines and the turbine spins the generator, giving us electricity. Pause the video now and complete task two. Let's check our answers. Number one, explain how a nuclear bomb works. So first, the neutron is fired at uranium-235, making it unstable. The unstable atom will break into smaller atoms, perhaps krypton and barium. This releases neutrons. These neutrons go on to start new fission reactions in a chain reaction. Each reaction releases energy. The process happens quickly and releases lots of energy in a short period of time. Question two, you had to add the missing labels to the parts of the power stations. So you have the control rods and the fuel rods. We have the turbines, which the steam is spinning around, and the turbines turn a generator. Explain the role of a fuel rod. This supplies the uranium for use in nuclear fission. What's the use of a control rod? It absorbs neutrons to slow down the fission reaction. And what's the role of a moderator? It slows down the neutrons to increase the chance of them causing successful fission when they reach the next fuel rod. Finally, let's have a look at what happened during the Chernobyl incident. On the 26th of April, 1986, a test was run at the nuclear power station in Chernobyl in the Ukraine, which went badly wrong. The reactor exploded, throwing radiation into the nearby surroundings. The reactor caught fire and the smoke from the fire carried radiation high into the atmosphere, which was then carried by wind and travelled for many miles. At Chernobyl, the control rods could not be forced back into the reactor. This meant that the reactor kept producing heat until the uranium melted and became molten and burned down into the ground. Now this is called a meltdown. At Chernobyl, heroic miners were brought in to dig a tunnel underneath the reactor and install a liquid nitrogen refrigerator to try to cool the molten uranium and prevent it from infecting the groundwater. After the Chernobyl incident, a large area was considered radioactive and too dangerous for people to live, so an exclusion zone was set up. This includes the city of Pripyat, which was evacuated and to this day no one is allowed to live in the area. Pause the video now and complete task three. Let's check our answers. Where is the Chernobyl power station? It is in the Ukraine, which was previously the USSR. What happened at the Chernobyl power plant? They performed a test at low power the reactor exploded. This caused a fire. Radiation was thrown into the atmosphere and the power station went into a meltdown. What is a meltdown? The uranium core heats continually until it melts into a molten uranium. 
What was the effect of the Chernobyl power station incident on the world? It increased the background radiation. Wind carried the radiation far away to many other countries. We have higher radiation in Eastern Europe. Chernobyl exclusions only needed to be set up. Many people died and were, had mutations or defects caused by the Chernobyl radiation. Power stations have had to be redesigned so this can never happen again.